All right, y'all, uh, welcome back to Wicked F-150. And this is the newest mod to go on this truck. Um, anybody with a stock suspension realizes and feels that body roll from the back end. It The roads here in Oklahoma City are god-awful. And it, it really makes for a rough ride a lot. Um, and on the forum here, there was a gentleman selling a used set. Uh, he says there was only about 5,000 miles put on these, um, but they were on a couple months and just received them yesterday. So let's go ahead and install them this evening. Um, so this is how they were shipped to me. Let me put this down real quick. <laughs> okay, so now if you can tell, there's already like some oxidization, oxida oxidization, however you say it, uh, going on already, um, which which was my biggest concern um, with these. That is a thing that they do. I've read that before. Apparently, they perform pretty well for how inexpensive they are, but their outer coating doesn't really last. So what I'm gonna do is just use a very high grit sandpaper. Um, I gotta see what I got here sitting next to me. Uh, I got quite a few. And just sand it down a little bit, and then I'm just gonna spray paint it black. Um, everything underneath this truck is black, um, and anything on the replacement will be as well. So they'll still match and go together and all of that. So that way it's protected from here on out from this happening. And let's hope they perform as good as they're supposed to. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So... I have an 800 grit and a 1000 grit sandpaper. Uh, I'm gonna use both of them on this, any metal that is showing, and then paint it with this uh, acrylic enamel, Stoleum, uh, paint and primer, just a gloss black, uh, and see how it works. I might need a rougher grit sandpaper. I don't need no comments about what, how I'm doing this. So, I mean, it does smooth it out, obviously, but it's not taking any of the... Let's get a harder grit and see how that works. Okay, so the only other sandpaper I have is this uh, rotary sandpaper that I have. Yeah. Thought that would be good enough, but this one, it's working. Um, if you can tell the difference, well, you probably can on the video, but it is taking a good bit of the oxidization. oxidization. I still can't say that right, but it's taking it off. Um, so I'm gonna use this, this is 120, uh, and then I'm just gonna work my way up to kind of smooth it out, which it's not wood, you don't technically have to, but I want, that's just, how I want to do it to make sure that it's smooth and the paint sticks really well. I don't want it to come off in a month or two, well, if I have this truck in a month. But I don't want it coming off down the road quickly. Um, it is taking all this off though, very nicely. So now you know that that, that is working and we're going to paint it. You get the process. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and come back once the sanding is done. Y'all don't need to watch all of that. All right, now the one's done. Uh, that's as far as I'm gonna go with it. Uh, but to me, that should be good enough. But as you can see, the one on the right, that one, <laughs> is the one that I just finished sanding off. And then this one, of course, still needs it. So you can see the difference in how much is left is actually on there and then you just lightly sand it off 
and I'm going to paint it and it'll be protected for a while. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and paint this one. Uh, like I said, with this acrylic enamel, uh, plastic metal and board. So, uh, it'll, it'll adhere just fine. Uh, it's the same paint that I used on the exhaust that has been there since last fall and it's held up just great. So I have no doubt that it'll be fine on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint this one and then sand that one while it's drying and then we're going to go ahead and put them on. Show you guys how to do it. Okay, so they're both painted, uh, waiting for them to dry. Underneath here, underneath the truck, uh, this is the driver's side. You need to remove that bolt there and that bolt there. Uh, it's supposed to be 18 on both on each side. Let's check. So that's a no. That's a yes. So <laughs> this one's an 18. This one is not. So I will double check that for you guys and let you know as to what that one is. Give me one minute. Okie dokie. So this one's actually a 16. So 18 on the outside, uh, or the nut, and then 16 on the bolt. Uh, same for the top. And you don't have to lift your truck. You don't have to support anything or anything like that. Uh, you want it sitting on the ground, level, and you can just remove the stock and put in the whatever new one you choose to put in. So let's go ahead and remove all four of these bolts and see if the first one's dry yet. All right, now when you do this, um, you're going to want to remove the bottom one first, but leave the bolt in and then undo the top and pull that one the whole way out so then the pressure is released and all of that. It's easier to take out that way. Um, I went ahead and loosened it with uh, the socket. But now I'm going to go ahead and use an impact to go ahead and finish removing the whole way. Uh, like I said, bolts 16, nuts and 18. Um, I just used, like I said, a socket set on that the bottom one and a wrench on that one. And then this one is an adjustable in the socket because I don't have a uh, box wrench for a... Uh, an 18. I only have up to a 17. But it still works. It's loose. I'm going to go ahead and take this one out and then swap them. All right. As you can see, now it's gone. Truck's just sitting here, nothing in it. So proof that you can, <laughs> you don't have to jack anything up. Uh, it's easier to do it without it. You don't need it. Um, but it's out. And if you can see, now that the stock one is extended, put it back in there, it does not fit in the top one. It will extend, which is the point of uh, taking the top, loosening the bottom, leaving the bolt in, taking the top out, and then just pulling that right out. Uh, doing it that way, it's easier. Uh, but let's get this new one in. It'd be uh, kind of the same thing. I'm going to try to put the bottom in first and pull it down and lock it into the top one. If not, top one and then pry it into the bottom one to squish up the shock. So we'll see, I'll let you guys know which one. All right, as you can see, it's back in. It's not tightened down, uh, but it was a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um, so definitely put the top in first, um, put the bolt through, and then you have to compress the shock to get it in. All right. Now it comes down probably about here and you got to compress it enough to get it in there uh, it would definitely be easier with another person uh, but holding it yourself trying to compress it and then hold this so it doesn't come back down and shove that bolt in was a little bit of a pain I would suggest an extra hand, set of hands um, but it's in that's how you do it I'm gonna set it up so you can watch watch me do the other one Okay, now for this one. Right. <clears throat> so like I said, bolt 16, nut 18.
Okay, loose. Don't ask me why, but this is just how I've always done it. So continue to do it, I loosen it with a socket first. Okay. Nut, nuts off, you leave the bolt in. Okay, now for the top. Okay, so <laughs> I record all these videos on my phone. Uh, going back and forth between pausing and leaving it on there so it could all be one video. Apparently my phone died. Uh, the new one's already in. I uh, had you guys watching. It died right as I finished uh, loosening up this bottom part on the stock shock. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the new bottom back out to show you guys how much harder it is to compress these Bilsteins than it is the stock shocks. Um, this is the stock one here. Um, as you can see, it has it's already worn down here. Um, there's almost 13,000 miles on this truck, and I've not done any off-roading or anything like that. Just pavement. And it already looks like that on the stock. So I'm hoping these Bilsteins definitely hold up uh, a lot better. But uh, to compress these, it's a lot easier. See? Like it, it's really not taking that that much force at all. You can see it extending, um, but that is also why you do the bottom, you uh, leave the bottom bolt in because it does need to extend. Uh, you leave the bottom, loosen it, leave the bottom bolt in, take out the top, let it extend and then pull the bolt out. Um, but again, super easy. Now you're about to see these Bilsteins. Oh, and this, this, it sucks to do by yourself. So I hope you guys know what this is. You know, I'm trying to help you guys out here. Uh, let me go around the other side to make it a little easier on myself. Crawl back under. All right, now like I said, when you put them back in, same concept, uh, you wanna do the top first. Uh, let me take this bolt back off. See if I can even get this. Okay. Now, see it extending? Okay. So that's extended on the Bilsteins. Okay. You have to make it roughly about five, five and a half inches up. Now, these are so much harder to compress. And this is why it'd be easier with a second hand. <clears throat> get it lined up right. Ah, son of a bitch. Sorry about that language. If you ever worked on anything, you know how much pain in the ass this is. Okay, so let's do it again. Okay, go ahead and put that on. Uh, this guy had him zip tied, uh, so I gotta. I had to cut the one on the driver's side. I'm gonna cut the zip tie on this one, uh, so the boot can actually go the whole way up on the way out of why he had him so low. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. Um, the I believe the torque specs are 60. I cannot remember if they're foot or inch pounds. Um, I don't use a torque wrench anyway. I have one, but I don't use it. <laughs> I don't use it on anything. Just the old narrative, you know, get it till it's tight and then a quarter turn past that. I've done it with everything my whole life and I'm gonna continue to do it that way. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do now is just tighten these up and it's done. Without a video, um, this probably would have been maybe a 20 to 30 minute job if that, I mean, it's not hard. 
super, super simple. Um, it's loosening four bolts and tighten them back up. Like I said, the hardest part is <laughs> compressing these new shocks. Uh, they, they, are, they are tough. Um, hopefully, I, I know with the Bilstein 5100s, uh, it's a stiffer ride, but it's, it really helps with that body roll and stuff, which is the problem that I'm having with the stock suspension. I just can't stand it. Um, hope you all liked the video. Hope you found it helpful. Any comments, please leave them, and I'll make sure I get back to you all. Uh, hope you all have a good week. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you all next time. All right, so a little update. Um, I just installed those Bilstein 5100s last night. Um, drove approximately about 100 miles today to work back. Um, then picking this little one up um, from daycare this afternoon. Uh, so about roughly 100 miles. And I made sure to hit every bump, pothole, whatever that I could and to test these things out because um, like I mentioned a little earlier in the video it um, it they're supposed to be stiffer ride than stock um, but it is supposed to stop the body roll so much which it did no more body roll stop it um, they did stop the body roll but in my opinion it has actually softened it up a little bit I don't find it's really any stiffer um, the little bumps in the potholes they it really soaks it up a lot better there's a stretch at work uh, about 100 150 feet where it's nothing but potholes and I wrote right in them to make sure how it felt uh, <laughs> to make sure see how it felt and it soaked them right up there was no issues whatsoever um, so I would highly recommend them and Good luck if you do get them. I uh, hope you like them as much as I do. See you next time.